All right, so today what we are gonna do is we're, we're gonna do a versus video between the Cobalt quarter inch hex impact driver versus the Ryobi brushless quarter inch hex impact driver. Now, both of these are brushless. Uh, for the Ryobi model, this is not the most powerful impact driver that they have. Uh, I believe this might be Cobalt's. And so yes, the Cobalt is a 24, uh, 24 volt system and the Ryobi is an 18 volt system. So we are gonna see which one of these does a faster job and easier job when it comes to doing the couple of timber lock screws and a couple of lag screws. Now we are gonna use, uh, in the beginning, two amp hour batteries, then we're, we are gonna jump up to four amp hour batteries. So for the Cobalt, this is model number 324B-03. And this is a, a three-speed selection with a, a screw feature. And the speed one, it goes to zero to 850 RPMs. Speed two, zero to 2000. And speed three, zero to 2700 RPMs. And it does not say anything about the torque. I'll put the torque in right now. And so, yes, this is a 24 volt, uh, 24 volt system. And this thing is off. Uh, this thing is awesome. Now for this one, there is a little wind up, even if you go full trigger. When, uh, but that's not gonna be an issue. So we are gonna use this and see what this uh, can do. I'm curious myself, I've never used this uh, in a test video yet when it comes to the actual uh, Cobalt product. So yes, that's number one. And the Ryobi, this is the mid-range impact, uh, impact driver. Uh, this is model number P239, variable speed trigger only. It goes to zero to 2900 uh, RPM, which that is 200 more RPM than the Cobalt. And the impacts per minute is zero to 3900. This is gonna be a good one because both of these are powerful impacts. So I can't wait to see what either, either of these can do. And like I said, we are going to use uh, four amp hour. We're going to use four amp hour batteries in this video as well. So the last thing I wanted to point out was is that both of the housing units that cover the anvil on both tools are metal. Uh, this has a plastic housing with metal inside because, as you can see right here, they just have a decorative cover for theirs when Ryobi does not. So you don't need it. You know, the, the both of them look good like that. And so yeah, but both of these are metal. But first we're gonna see how these perform with just two amp hour batteries. Now the two amp hour battery for the cobalt has a fuel gauge. When Ryobi does not. No fuel gauge on the uh, two amp hours. So let's bring the log out and get to it. All right, so we have a fresh slate right here. There are no holes in this whatsoever. We are gonna use the Ryobi first. Let's see if the Ryobi is a push-in collet. It is not, you actually have to adjust it for it to go in. All right, so what we are gonna do is we are gonna do approximately uh, four Timberlock screws uh, with the two amp hour battery, then take them out per one. We're not gonna waste time in between, we're not gonna waste any time in between each Timberlock screws, we're just gonna go straight into the next one. All right, so variable speed only. All right, so ready, go. Very good, we got the next one right here. All right, so ready, go. Got the next one right here. Ready, go. And the last one for Ryobi. All right, so ready, go. That is time. Very good. That was Ryobi's. We're gonna give the Ryobi a little break. We're gonna take them all out at once. 
So it is time for the cobalt. Uh, is the cobalt push in collet? Nope, you have to adjust it to, to put that in. There we go. Alrighty, so we're, we got, we're gonna do four. All right, so ready, go. Time. Time, time, time. Ready, go. The cobalt seems a little bit quieter. All right, so next one. Ready, go. Time. The next one, last one. Ready, go. Time, yeah, the cobalt definitely seems like a quieter motor. Definitely a quieter motor. All right, so we have a four amp hour HP battery for the Ryobi. Uh, variable trigger only, once again. All right, so ready. Now we're going to time this all at once. I'm going to go to the next one as fast as possible. Ready, go. You are failing right there. Yep, can't take that one out. That is gold. All right, so the Ryobi failed. Take all four of them out. It doesn't matter with the circumstances. Yes, there's a knot there, but that's every single piece of wood you buy, no matter what, pressure treated or regular wood, they have knots. I had a... A uh, piece of 4x4 four four that, that the Milwaukee Fuel uh, 2850, I think this is, 2853-20 failed to take out. Alright, speed 3. Let's see if it's got the power. Ready, go. Alright, so we'll go to speed 1. Speed two. Nope. Wood itself is inconsistent. All right, so right we failed to take that out. So we are gonna see if Cobalt can take that out really quick. All right, so ready, go. It did take it out now. What happened with the Ryobi, it showed no process of movement whatsoever when it comes to watching where the socket is. This, uh, the Cobalt immediately showed that it was moving, but it was moving very slowly. The Ryobi wasn't moving that at all. All right, so Cobalt wins on that one. All right, so let's take, this th let's take these four out. Ready, go. Like I said, this is not Ryobi's best impact. This one is. So, but this test was to see what the, uh, the Cobalt will do against the P239. Alrighty, so we are going to use Makita's half inch to a quarter inch hex adapter. Cobalt will go first. We are going to drive in one four and a half inch each and uh, take it out and see what the time is. All right, so I think right here should be sufficient. All right, so ready, go. And that 
is time. Wow, not bad. Not bad at all. Four and a half inch, we'll do it right here. All right, so ready, go. Time. It started skipping at the end. Then what we, we are gonna do is we are gonna do a stress test on both the motors. Each of them we're gonna take out a four and a half inch and six, in, uh, six inch at once. Ready? Go. Time. Did a good job. Right there should be good. All right, so ready? Go. Time. Wow. Both of them did a fantastic job with that. All right, so we are going to do the cobalt first. We are going to do the stress test and see what it can do. Now, hopefully, both of these will be able to take it out because one thing I am tired of, I'm tired of bringing another tool in that's not a part of the test. All right, we got it in reverse. We're going to do a four and a half inch first. All right, so ready, go. Wow, I, I am seriously going to extend the fact that the Cobalt is a lot quieter than the Ryobi. The Ryobi is loud. All right, so the Ryobi's turn. Do the four and a half inch first. All right, so ready, go. And see, just like that one, in the beginning, it was uh, it appeared to just be spinning, but I saw it was moving it, but very slowly. So I kept on at, uh, going at it, and it took it out. Unlike the Timberlock screw, it did not act that way. So it was moving. I knew it would do it, and it did. Alrighty, so both... I strongly believe that both of these did very well for the tasks that they were doing. Now, when it comes to who actually loses in time, it really doesn't matter. You're still going to go get the tool and brand that you love the most. Do I, I recommend both of these? Like every tool, it all depends what you need it for. When it comes to recommendations for uh, the long-term use, I, I say get, get Hilti. Now, once again, the model number for the Cobalt is 3D4B-03, and the model number for the Ryobi is P239. Now, the P239, I think, looks seriously awesome. I love the design. I love that it's a sort of square shape, and it's a brushless motor. It's powerful. It's powerful enough, and so is the Cobalt. You know, the Cobalt's 24, uh, 24 volt, 24 volt max, I should say. And so, yes, uh, both of these did uh, very well. I like them both. I love both brands. The Cobalt is a fantastic brand, and so is Ryobi. Uh, the one that you want to pick, it's, it's all up to you. So that's pretty much it. This is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.